Well, here, let me get the. I don't know if I want it endorsed. It smells beautiful. I know it does. That's what I'm kind smell of. Smell that. Oh my god. It's Everyone, so the secret garden is almost completely torn down, minus a few things here and there, including this uh, great big rose, Gertrude Jaco, that uh, it's going to hurt right now. It's probably going to hurt some of you watching this, but I have to cut this back. Um, it's done great. It's done beautifully back here, and I'll pop up some pictures where Angie was standing here, and it had all these blooms. But we haven't had that in quite a while because um, we have a lot of shade in this area. Now, although this rose is a good rose for shade, it does require some sun. It benefits from a lot of sun, actually. And we have this tree right here that provides a lot of shade up here. As you can see, there's a lot more growth up here, but that's because it's getting some sun from the top on this side over here. Now, we do get a lot of cloudy skies. It does rain quite a bit. So it's even more shade that's provided to this rose. So it hasn't done quite as well as we wanted it to these last year and a half. Um, but... As you can see, we always get a uh, we get a flush at the beginning of fall, sometimes in mid-fall. And you can see there's some buds popping up here and there. So it's going to give us some blooms. But unfortunately, like I said, I'm going to have to cut this rose back. And it's, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. But I'm excited. It makes me happy to know that we're going to be able to move these roses to another garden. Hopefully put these guys in the ground. Because as you know, these roses are in containers. And any plant, it doesn't matter what it is, rose, shrub annuals they're gonna do better in the ground they get to spread their roots they get to intake all the nutrients and water they need to and they'll flourish a lot better so we're excited to move this rose hopefully to the next garden and get it in the ground somewhere because we know we're gonna have a lot more sun to play with and we can also provide it some shade if we need to but it's exciting to be able to say that this is gonna go to a better place and of course you saw strawberry hill if you didn't see that video yet after i cut it completely back it didn't care it started sprouting up. It's almost about two feet tall already. So that tells me what we're doing is working. The soil amendments that we're using, the biotone that we're using, definitely gonna help these plants. So again, very excited. All right, so now for the very tough part. Starting to prune this back. Okay, so I know a lot of you had questions about how Gertrude Jika was actually on the wall here. All I used was picture frame hooks. Um, not the most ideal thing to use because it was temporary. And I'm gonna fill these in with a little bit of caulking. So um, you don't wanna do that to your own home. Um, this will get covered up. What I would suggest is using some type of wire, running it to the top of any of these, uh, these siding panels here. If you can do it that way, that's gonna be the most ideal way to get your rose to climb up on a wall like this without actually penetrating into the uh, the siding here. All right, so you might be asking how much of this rose I actually took down. What I did was I actually went down quite a bit. I'm gonna go down to about a third and that's what you wanna do if you're gonna do a hard pruning. Again, we don't suggest doing any hard pruning um, during the summer or whatever the case is. We're only doing it because we're moving but they will definitely flourish as long as you take care of them the right way. So I went down a third, you can go halfway. You can even go all the way down as, uh, like I said before, Strawberry Hill, I completely went all the way down because we wanted it for easy transport. And as long as you're doing things the right way, they're gonna flourish, they're gonna start to grow again. And in no time, you're gonna have roses by next season. All right, so as I stated before, Gertrude Jico likes to give us a last flush right around this time, uh, maybe a little bit later in fall, but it's been pretty warm here. Um, it's a cooler weather uh, rose. So I think if the temperatures were a bit cooler, uh, you know, fall's already right around the corner, it would have gave us a lot more buds. And it was already starting to show some buds. As you can see, there's one right here, this one here, and then this one here. I'm actually gonna give these to Angie to take inside because they'll still bloom if we place them in water. And just this little thing right here, it's not even open yet. 
and it gives off a beautiful fragrance and it's one rose that we love to have in the house in just vases in various spots and give off this nice fragrance around the house. So it's actually a beautiful rose. Can't wait to put in some water, let it open up completely. Also have a rose hip here. Um, now, Gertrude Jico hasn't really uh, given us many rose hips, um, but I tried doing some self-pollination with some other roses. I don't know, maybe we'll discover that sometime later next year, whatever the case is. But I still have two more roses to go. Um, we have Gertrude Jico that's on the fence out on the outside of the secret garden here. But I'm going to pull Gertrude Jico out right now so you can see what container it's in and how low I'm going to go with its final pruning. All right, so here is the container that Gertrude was growing in. Um, this is, I believe, um, 15 by 15. Um, so it's about maybe a 7 to 10 gallon container. But as you can see, it's done absolutely well in a container like this. All we've done for the last three and a half years now is scrape out about half of the, not half, I would say about two to three inches of soil and then replenish it with a little bit more soil and throw some compost and some mulch on top to help it retain some water and some nutrients. But can you imagine what this girl would do in a bigger container or much yet better in the ground. Um, I think it would just flourish like crazy and it'd be a beautiful looking rose. Um, so this is what I've cut when I took it off from the wall here. So I'm gonna go to about right here. Um, like I said, it, it's gonna be quite a bit. Um, you wanna cut about two thirds off if you're gonna do a hard prune, leave about a third on, which is what I'm trying to say. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down to about right here. So this is gonna be more, almost three quarters of the way from all the growth that it had. All right, so that's how much I've cut off of it. Now you don't have to go this harsh. If you're just moving it from one part of your garden to another, you can do maybe a third of it and wrap it up, move it to where it needs to go, and then you can pin it back up the way you want it. Um, but this will definitely do it some good. It's gonna be a refresh for it. We're moving from one state to a few states over. So it's gonna be quite a long trip. And we did this because we wanna fit it in the trader the best way possible without actually hurting it, breaking it, or whatever the case is. We just want it to be nice and comfortable. Like I said, it'll do just fine. Um, it, this is gonna actually be good for it. I, I can tell you right now that we maybe have a week and a half to move from this point and we might start seeing some little growth, who knows? Um, but I can definitely say that we're gonna see some growth, especially moving to a new garden. So now to move on to the next two. Um, again, this is hurting quite a bit because those two um, have done extremely well out there as well um, with the light and the shade that's provided to them, uh, but definitely exciting. All right, so now we're on the outside of the secret garden. I have a Gertrude Jekyll here and I have a Gertrude Jekyll on the other side there that need to come out. Another hard pruning, we're gonna cut it down leave about a third of it, maybe a quarter of it, because again, we wanna minimize how much damage we're gonna do when we're actually moving, and I'd rather cut it all now than leave it long enough for it to get broken, twisted, or whatever the case is. But as you can see, um, we didn't do much to this one. We've let them just do their thing. There's a lot of um, deadheading that didn't happen, a lot of spraying that didn't happen. That's mainly because we're moving, we weren't spraying, we weren't treating for anything because we knew this was quickly gonna get pruned back and moved over to the next garden. But one thing I do like to do, and I don't think I mentioned this because we did have some orb weaver spiders, is I like to make sure that there's nothing hitchhiking that I'm disturbing basically. Um, hitchhiking, um, really not too worried about. I'm gonna spray all these down before we load them in the truck. But disturbances like this spider right here, gonna gently move him out of the way, make sure he moves on to another spot where he's gonna be a lot more comfortable and put him on uh, that hydrangea there. Oh, don't know where he went, but he's, he's in a better place. Ooh, did you hear that? That was the sound of my brain screaming. Yeah, it kind of hurts, but a necessary uh, hurt. In case you guys are wondering, I am using uh, Corona these are one and a half inch limb and branch loppers. Um, you could use some pruners. Um, I'm using the loppers because it's a lot quicker just to cut it all down. And uh, somebody mentioned it before, my daughter was doing this, but it makes this a little bit easier without grabbing it so hard and you're far away. You pinch the stuff that you've cut and just toss it all the way.
Okay guys, so I think that's it for this video. I was gonna show pruning the other Gertrude Jiggle, but I think it's just too much repetitiveness for this video. You guys know what I'm doing already. I'm pruning them back hard. We're getting ready to move. Um, and it's just, it excites me more than it does hurt. Uh, I know I'm playing around. Um, it, it's a necessary thing to do, but I did want to talk about one more thing before I go, is when you're doing any work like this, especially when you're pruning roses that are this thorny, um, this is Gertrude Jekyll. Lots of thorns, very, very thick, similar to Hardo Car. Hardo Car has a bunch more tiny um, prickles on there. I think that's what you call them. Uh, I read it one time, I think they're called prickles. But anyways, um, wear some good gloves. Um, Angie actually has some leather gloves, which are uh, pretty much rose gloves. They have leather tips on them. So it's easy for her to go in there, grab them without getting poked and disposing of all the cuttings that we're doing. I like wearing these kind of gloves. These aren't particularly garden gloves, but I'd love to feel my fingers. I like tight fitting gloves. Um, it's just what I like to do. I like to feel what's actually happening rather than wear anything bulky, but definitely wear some gloves that are gonna protect your hands. Hope you enjoyed it guys. Uh, just a quick video showing you behind the scenes of what's happening. We have a lot more coming that we're trying to put together. We're taking little snips here and there about tearing down the secret garden tearing down the side garden just tearing down the garden in general and getting ready to move so hope you enjoyed it we'll see you guys in the next video bye here you guys already know what i'm doing and the bus passes of course gertrude has quite a bit of you think it's it on buses that might be it no more school buses